Here's a close up of the dog. And this dog is six inches from the foot, the bottom of the foot to the tip of the ear. You can see the beautiful eyes. And I use the Suncatcher Craft Eye with the blue in it. And here is her scarf. And she also has a little pretty flower. And I show you how to put the little ring at the top of the head if you want to hang the dog. And this is the tail. And of course the legs. You can stuff the legs if you wanted. These I left unstuffed. But you could the dog can sit. And then also I have a strap that if you want to hang the dog from a bag, you just put the strap through and then you can button it so that the dog will hang from your bag. Here is a close-up of the little puppy, Westy, that can be used to hang on your bag. just want to show you what it looks like hanging on the bag. And I have some other ones that, other YouTube video tutorials for the little cat heads as well. If you, want, if you like hanging things onto your bags. And this is what the dog looks like. You're going to need your F or 4 millimeter crochet hook and a pair of scissors and your tapestry needle. I use these 20 millimeter assorted book rings. It's a 12 pack. They have different colors and it's only $1.99. I use the color Soft White by Red Heart Super Saver and I also use the color Black by Super Saver Jumbo. And your color that you want for the fur of your dog. And I'm also using a cherry red colored Red Heart yarn. I use the color Soft Pink, Karen Simply Soft for the ears. I'm using Suncatcher Craft Eyes, the 9mm solid black colored eyes. I just realized that my Suncatcher Craft Eyes actually have a little blue in them, but you can use your regular black eyes or the colored eyes, whatever you want to do, but mine are going to have a little bit of a blue in them. You can use any buttons that you like for the decorations. I'm using some of my leftover crafting with buttons, these glittery red flowers. For your button, you can use a regular sewing needle and thread, or you can use your DMC yarn threader and a small tapestry needle that will fit through the back of your button. That way you can sew your button on with yarn if you wanted. If you're making a strap for your dog, you're going to need an extra button. And I'm using a large button, large craft button. You're going to start with your soft white colored yarn. And we're going to do a magic circle. So you just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. And then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook and go under those loops around the middle fingers. And then bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Now you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So you just go into the magic circle, bring up a loop. Now you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. And you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and your thumb and just hold it at the base of the six single crochet and then you just take one of the loops that are opposite. If you pull on it and it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. So gently just close it. You don't have to make it too tight. Then let go and then pull on your loose yarn in and then that just closes up your magic circle. 
Now is the time that you can close the center of your magic circle if you need to. Just turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end. And then that closes up the center nicely. Now you're going to need your yarn marker and just place it right where you left off. And I just use one of my scraps of yarn. Then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12. So go ahead and finish making two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 and then come back. This is how your work should look so far. Then you just take your yarn marker and move it up for the next round. For the next round, you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch all the way around. So go ahead and finish making one single crochet into every stitch all the way back to the yarn marker and then come back. Continue making one single crochet into every stitch around until you've completed one, two, three rows. After you complete the third row, we're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So you just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you can finish off, just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop. Bring enough yarn through to sew the snout onto the head. Now you can set your snout aside for a second and go ahead and get your black yarn. We're going to make the nose. So you just take your black yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Put your crochet hook right through the loop. Hold the base with your middle finger and your thumb. And then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. Go into the second chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. And then in the last stitch, you're going to make a single crochet as well. So bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, and bring enough yarn through to sew the nose onto the snout. Go ahead and grab your snout and then take your tapestry needle and put it onto the shorter loose yarn end on the nose and decide how you want your nose on the dog and I want my nose make it this way to be like this on the dog so I'm going to take place it about how you would like it on the snout and then you're just going to sew it on I would go right through the point and I went right through the center of my magic circle Then I'm going to take the long end that I left for sewing and I'm just going to take and sew the nose in place. And I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot with the loose yarn in that I put on the inside. And 
And then I'm going to continue to sew the nose in place. I'm going to sew the other side down. Go ahead and sew your nose onto your snout. I'm going to go ahead and show you. I've almost got it sewn on. Because I'm going to use this same yarn to make the mouth. So I'm just going to make sure that it stayed on, stays on very well. Sew it on a couple of times. And then once you have it sewn on, then you're going to take and go at the base of the nose, come out with your tapestry needle, and then you're going to go straight down about a row. And then you're going to make the smile. You're just going to go up along that row, the curve up, and go back down where you went in initially. And do the same thing on the other side. And then tie your knot on the inside and you're done with the nose and the mouth. Go ahead and set the snout aside for now. We're going to make the head so you can use your same soft white yarn and we're going to make a magic circle. Just drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and you're going to make the same way that you started with the snout. We're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to close it the same way. Then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12. And then come back and I'll show you the increase. Take rounds. your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. Then we're going to do our first increase round. You're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then in the second stitch you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and then come back that you should have completed 18 stitches of one single crochet in the first stitch and two single crochet into the second stitch. Then you're going to move your yarn marker up for the next increase round. For the next increase round you're going to make one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet into the second stitch, and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You should have completed 24 stitches for that round. Now we're going to do our last increase round. For this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the second stitch, one single crochet into the third stitch, and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. After you complete that round you should have 30 stitches. Then you're going to take your yarn marker and move it up and you're only going to make one single crochet into every stitch all the way around. So one single crochet into every stitch. Go ahead and complete one single crochet into every stitch around until you finished one, two, three, four, five rounds. After you finish your five rounds, then you're going to take, turn towards the other side. You're going to take your snout 
put your pillow stuffing or whatever stuffing, craft stuffing that you're using for the snout. The long end that you left for sewing or the same colored yarn as the snout. You're going to sew on the snout with your tapestry needle. Make sure that you have the smile facing up. You're going to line up the snout with the bottom. And then you're just going to take and sew the snout in place. Making sure that you line it up along the bottom and that the smile is facing up. I like to sew the bottom first to make sure it's straight and then just go ahead and sew the snout in place. Just going in and out of the head and then come back. After you sew your snout on you can go ahead and place your craft eyes and you could see how I placed my craft eyes. How many rows up and how far apart on the snout. After you finish sewing on the eyes, I mean the snout and the placing the eyes, the safety eyes, then you're going to take your yarn marker, just place it right where you left off. We're going to finish closing the head now. So these are going to be our decrease rounds. I'm going to hold my yarn. Now you're going to make one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. So you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, then go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through all three for your decrease. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then There's going to be one stitch left before your yarn marker. I'm, I went ahead and just did one single crochet into that stitch. And you have a total of 24 stitches for that round. Then you want to take and move your yarn marker up for your next decrease round. You're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the second stitch, and then make your decrease stitch. Single crochet, decrease, stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I'm back to my yarn marker and I finished 18 stitches for that round. This will be our last decrease round. You're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then you're going to make your decrease stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. That will complete 12 stitches for that round. Then you can go ahead, take out your yarn marker and we're going to do a, make a slip stitch Go into the next stitch over, yarn over, and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off. Just yarn over and bring enough yarn through just to bury into your work. And then you're just going to set the head aside for now. For the body, you're going to grab the soft white yarn again, and you're just going to make a magic circle just like we did for the head and you're going to make six single crochet that's my slip knot then six single crochet into the magic circle then you're going to close it just like you did for the head and then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 and then come back. Go ahead and grab your yarn marker for your increase round and then you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch 
and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn. That will make 18 stitches for that round. Now you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. So only one single crochet into every stitch around. Then go ahead and continue making one single crochet into every stitch until you've completed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounds. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. And you can stuff the body also with some pillow stuffing. And you can stuff it as you go as well. For the decrease round, you're just going to make one single crochet into the first stitch. Then you're going to make your decrease. So you go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through all three for your decrease. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. That should have given you 12 stitches for that round. Then take your yarn marker and remove it. We're just going to close the body now. So you're going to make a decrease stitch all the way around until you're almost closed. And then I'm going to show you how to slip stitch it closed. Do one more decrease. And then I'm going to slip stitch closed. You just skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to keep slip stitching until you've closed the body. This should be my last one. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then take your tapestry needle and place it onto the long end, I mean the loose yarn end, and then just go right back through the body and come out anywhere. Just going to bury that loose yarn end. And then you can just cut it. Now the side that we close is going to be the front of the chest because we're going to cover it with hair anyway, and then this will be the tail. Go ahead and take your head and we're going to go ahead and stuff the head and sew on the head to the body. Just get the same colored yarn onto your tapestry needle for sewing and then you're going to place the head onto the front of the body. Just line it up so that the front chest is lined up. Then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're just going to go into the body and out through the head. And you're just going to sew the head onto the body. You can take and tie a knot with your loose yarn ends. And then reposition the head. Then you just take and sew the head onto the body. Just going in and out. When you're finished sewing on the head, then come back and I'll show you what to do next. After you sew the head on so it's nice and secure, then you just take and tie a knot and you bury your loose yarn ends the same way that you did before. Just go out anywhere on the body and then just cut. For the ears, you're going to make a pink, two pink triangles and also 
two soft white colored triangles. And then you're going to sew them together with your pink yarn. I'm going to show you how to make one. I'll show you with the pink yarn first. So you're going to make a slip knot. Just take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, go through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over and bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of five. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the second chain from the hook. Then you're going to bring up a loop. Two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet all the way back across and that will give you a total of four single crochet for that row. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're not going to go into the base of that first chain one that you made. You're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next two stitches and that will give you again four stitches for that row. <clears throat> then you're just going to turn your work and you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet and then you're going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches and that will give you three single crochet for that row. Then you're going to turn your work again, go into the next stitch over for a single crochet and you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. So you have two single crochet for that row. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to just make one single crochet into the next stitch and then you're going to finish off and then you've finished your triangle. And bring enough yarn through to sew the pink triangle onto the white triangle. So now you're going to make with your soft white yarn you're going to make the exact same triangle. Now you should have two triangles, one of the pink color and one with the white color. Go ahead and place the pink color one right on top. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and the long end that you left for sewing with the pink yarn and you're just going to sew the two pieces together. Go ahead and make two ears and then we're going to sew them onto the dog. Then you just take and sew your ears on and you can see how I lined up my ears. This is what it looks like after I sewed the ears on. You can see that here's the center of the magic circle and it's the exact space between the two ears. And you can see how many stitches I have from the eye. One, two, three, four, five stitches away from the eye on both sides. And then this is what it looks like from the back. To make the feet, we're going to start with a magic circle again. But this time, you're going to make seven single crochet into the magic circle. So here's one, two, 
So for the other parts of the dog, we did six single crochet. For the foot, we're going to make seven single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. It should be seven stitches. After you finished your seventh stitch, go ahead and get a yarn marker. You can close the center of the magic circle as well. And just grab your yarn marker. Now you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. Let me just make sure where my stitch is. For seven more rounds. And you could turn it inside out as well. And then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch until you've completed seven rounds and then come back. After you finish one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds, then you're just going to make one decrease stitch Then we're going to slip stitch closed. So you're going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook, and then one more slip stitch should close it. Then you're going to finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. We're not going to stuff the legs. Then you're just going to take your tapestry needle, put it onto your loose yarn end, and then just go right back down through the center, and you can come out anywhere on the leg. And then just cut your loose yarn end. And you're going to need four legs. Now you're going to take two of your legs and also get the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle and you're going to take and line up the legs onto the body where you want to have them and I do it about a little bit higher than halfway up then I take my tapestry needle and I go about a stitch about a couple rows down and then I go all the way through out the other side with my tapestry needle then just pull the yarn through and leave enough yarn on the other side for tying a knot then you're going to go back through so just go about a stitch away from where you came out and then go right back through to the other side and I want to come out about a stitch away from where I went in And then you can take, puff out the body a little bit, tie a knot, and then I like to do it one more time. Just to make sure it's nice and secure.
And then you can puff out the chest again. And then tie another knot. And then bury your loose yarn ends. And then attach the back legs the same way. And then come back. This is what my back legs look like. You can see how you can move the front legs and the back legs. For the tail, you're going to start with the magic circle. But this time, you're going to make only three single crochet into the magic circle. And then you close it the same way. Then you're only going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. So it's only going to be three stitches. And you're just going to keep making three single crochet, one single crochet into every stitch. Until you have the size tail that you want. And that's a good size tail. So I'm going to go ahead and make a slip stitch just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook and then I'm going to finish off just pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the dog and you could take your loose yarn end and just bring it right through the center and out the other side and if it's a long loose yarn end you can use that part too to sew the tail onto your dog and I'm going to position my tail right on the top just like this and just sew the tail in place and then bury your loose yarn ends when you're done. Now if you're going to continue on and make your Westie then you're going to take and get the fur the color fur that you're going to use for your Westie and put it onto your tapestry needle and we're going to start on the nose right by the eye and you just take your tapestry needle and just get a small and you're going to make loops all the way down towards the nose and make the length of the loops the same size And we just need a little bit more to finish towards the nose so you can get more yarn. And you just keep making your loops. And 
until you get all the way to the nose. Then you're just going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut each individual loop and tie a knot. So go ahead, make your loops, and then cut each individual loop and tie a knot. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side of the snout. So go ahead, finish cutting each individual loop on this side and tying your knots. And then go on the other side and do the same thing and then come back. After you finish both sides, then we're going to take and work right down the center. And you're going to loop it the same way just right down the center of the snout. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Until the top of the snout is completely covered and then you're going to loop and tie your knots the same way. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now I have the snout completely covered on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and trim my snout now and I'm just going to take one side and grab all of the hair that I just made and you're going to angle your scissors and just cut one length and you can see how I angled it so I'm closer to the head and out further away from the nose you can see the length that I cut and I'm going to do the same thing. Make sure that on the other side that you have the same length before you cut and you're also going to cut it at an angle. So I'm just measuring my other side and then I'm just going to cut at an angle. And then I'm going to take and make the hair under the snout. So again, I get more of a hair on the tapestry needle. And on the side of the mouth, right under the mouth, I'm going to go ahead one row down. I'm going to loop the hair underneath the chin. All along that row. It's going to get a little bit more. So here you can see how I looped 
one row down from one side of the mouth to the other side of the mouth. Now I'm just going to cut the loops then, and tie Then, after you're done with the fur under the chin, you're going to grab all of the hair under the chin and you're going to cut it the same length as the sides of the snout. So you just take and cut. And then you have the fur on the sides of the snout and then under the chin. Now we're going to work on the sides of the eye. Now you just take your tapestry needle and you're going to work along the sides of the eye. And you're just going to make loops along the side of the eye. And you're going to work up towards the top of the eye and then we're going to go straight up towards the ear. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you should have hair on both sides of the dog. So we're going to go ahead and cut that hair. You just take one side, grab all of the hair that you just put on one side, and you're going to cut at an angle the same length as the front of the snout. You can see how it goes right towards this front of the snout. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just take all of the hair that you just put on And then you're going to cut at an angle. And then you have both the sides finished. Now we're going to work on the top. First we're going to start along the back and then our last loops will be for the bangs on top of the head. So for the length on the back of the head, you just want it to come about the level of the tail. And then you're just going to loop it across the back of the head. Making your loops all the same size. Then once you're finished with the loops across the back of the head, then you're going to take and loop it across the front, creating the bangs. And we can trim the bangs when we're done. So you just make it loop towards the front. I'm going to get more yarn. Now after you finish making the bangs, you can go ahead and trim them. So you grab every, all of the hair that you used or the yarn that you used for the bangs and just trim them short. And then we're going to trim the back of the head. Then you just turn the dog around and grab all of the hair that you had for the back of the head. And you're just going to trim that hair. And 
Then the last thing you're going to do is just make loops all the way around the body, across the chest, and back to the other side. And after you've finished putting hair all around the body, you can also put a little bit more hair on the back of the head as well. Then you can take and trim the hair. And I'm going to trim along the bottom. So you just take and cut the bottom the length that you want it. All the way around the bottom of the doll. If you're sewing your button on with yarn, then I'm going to use my yarn threader and just hook the yarn and bring it through the eye of the tapestry needle. And the easiest way I've found is to jiggle your yarn threader up and down and then that brings it through nicely. And I'm just using my soft white colored yarn to sew my button onto the dog. I'm just going to sew the tapestry needle into the area that I want to put my button. And just carefully bring the yarn through. And then once I bring the yarn through, then I can go through the back of the button. And then go back down into the head. Just going to find where my other yarn went. And then I'm going to move the hair out of the way and then just go down into the head only. And then I'm going to tie a knot and then bury my loose yarn ends. Then you can take your book ring and hook it onto the back of the head. Just grab a stitch and then you have a little ring onto the dog. If you want the scarf, then you're going to take your red yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. I'm still using the same size crochet hook and you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop to make a chain. And you're going to make the chain the size for around the neck of your dog. So, so far I have a chain of five. Go ahead and make a chain of 60. And then after you make your chain of 60, you're going to hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb and make a chain of three. One, two, three. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which was the stitch that you were holding. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two. Two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two for a double crochet. Then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. So one double crochet into every stitch back across and then come back. This is how your work should look. Then you're just going to take your loose yarn ends 
and put them onto your tapestry needle. Just going to weave them through your work just to bury them. And then go ahead and cut your loose yarn ends. Then you just tie the scarf around the dog's neck. Now if you want to hang your dog to your bag, I'm going to show you how to make the button loop. I'm using my red yarn again, and I'm going to form a loop to make a slip knot. I'm using the same size crochet hook. And I'm going to make a chain of one, two, three, four, and five. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and make a single crochet back across. Then I'm going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. Turn my work. And you're going to make a double crochet, yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. And I have a total of four double crochet. Then I'm going to chain three. Turn my work and make a double crochet back across. And I'm going to keep repeating these steps until I have the length that I want for the strap. Once you finish the length that you want for your strap, and mine is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows of double crochet, then I'm going to make a chain for the buttonhole. One, two, three, four, five. So my chain is five for my buttonhole. I'm going to go into the top stitch of that first double crochet I made on the opposite side, and I'm going to make a slip stitch. And that's going to form a little buttonhole loop at the top. Then I'm going to finish off, just yarn over, and pull enough yarn through to bury into my work. And then I have a little buttonhole at the top. Go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends and then come back. After you bury your loose yarn ends on your strap, go ahead and get the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle. Or, depending on the button that you're using, I'm using this button for mine, which will fit my large tapestry needle. You're just going to sew your button onto the opposite side. Then you can take your button and your strap and just put it right through the top loop. And you can hang your dog onto whatever you want to hang your dog onto.